In today's video, I will be talking about the problems with Deepwoken's lore and the inconsistencies within it. Make sure to subscribe since only about 20% of the people watching this video right now are actually subscribed. And also, I'm live on Twitch right now as of this video coming out, so go check me out there. Now let's get into it. Deepwoken's lore is all over the place. Deepwoken lore can be found in item descriptions with mysteries like the lore around Purple Cloud. The lore can also be found in books, through talking to NPCs, and even just while progressing sometimes. However, the problem with this is that Deepwoken's lore is literally everywhere, but you are never incentivized to look for it or even try to find it. A lot of it also just isn't included in the game. Yeah, most people know how the depths works and how the characters in game are technically considered immortal, but the game never tells you any of this. The only way you would ever know this is if you're in the Deepwoken Discord listening to the lore stuff that the developers talk about. This video is also kind of a continuation to my previous video talking about bad Deepwoken lore, so go watch that one if you haven't. Anyway, you can pretty much progress an entire build or even multiple builds without ever knowing anything about Deepwoken's lore. In a normal progression, the only lore you'll probably ever find out about is the Duke Quest lore. And even then, all you'll really know is that the ruler of Etrus, who just happens to wear BDSM black gimp gear, is evil, which is pretty obvious as it is. If Deepwoken had more quests, then they would be able to add more lore into the game, and so much more of it would be way more accessible for newer players so they could understand the Deepwoken world better without having to be a part of the actual community, because it's, uh, not a very welcoming one. It's also a bit confusing because the lore changes depending on who's talking about it because it's very non-organized in terms of the developers. Now let's talk about some things in the lore specifically that I hate and that don't make sense. And this time I did a bit of studying because in last time I made a video like this, a lot of you were commenting how I don't know about the lore and how I need to read the lore because lots of the stuff makes more sense than I think it does. Which, first of all, no, it's still equally stupid. And second of all, it doesn't matter that much, and I'm not going out of my way to find and read hidden books in areas of the game where I have literally never been to. Anyway, first of all, shadow casts legality. In lore, it is illegal to use shadow magic. If you use it near Etrus guards, realistically they should attack you and try to restrain you, but they don't. Despite the magic being outlawed and completely illegal, it is not enforced at all by any sort of law enforcement throughout the game. And the only reason I could think for this is because the guards see you using powerful illegal magic and choose not to mess with you because they don't want to die. But then the same thing could go for whenever they attack someone who clearly looks 30 levels higher than them, but then they choose to do it anyway and get one shot. Second of all, this is kind of just a nitpick, but from verse 1 to verse 2, how did people evolve from using Ether Reservoir to Tempo overnight, but then their cities haven't progressed technologically in 400 years? Along with that, why does Deepwoken even bother having age and year mechanics? Nothing happens over time. Characters age, only changes their hair color, and even then you can use a moon ring or a waning ring to remove or add the effects of aging. And along with that, back to the argument on how Deepwoken's vision has changed, we were promised a progressing world that would change with time, but 400 years later and Etrus still doesn't have toasters, while Great Hive Aretel doesn't have flying Gundam mechs yet, or at least ones that aren't visible and only actually exist in lore. Anyway, next up, racism is once again gone, not entirely relevant, but lots of the factions were supposed to be racist, which from a lore and gameplay perspective would have been really cool, because if your race affected your standing from certain factions and gave you buffs or debuffs in friendly areas or better shopkeeper prices, it would have given the races in games some use that doesn't crazily benefit PvP while shifting the meta, while still being cool and unique, rather than the only good race in the game spawning with a glider and every other race does absolutely nothing else. Recently, Hive was also revealed to have gone past their elitist views in the past 400 years because they're no longer racist. This means that in 400 years in the Deepwoken world, entire civilizations can progress socially, but not physically or technologically. Along with that, Hive has plasma cannons and life weave magic which is hidden from all non-Hive sources, but not even the most trusted of Hive soldiers are given any actual weapons because they still have the same boring weapons everyone else has while their robots are shooting lasers at me. Like damn, how are you gonna have flying mechs that shoot plasma cannons and big mini nuke go like Gundam robots but you can't give your soldiers some real weapons. To me, it sounds like Hive is hiding something, and maybe they're actually broke, and we don't know it. Next up, why can Alpha Sharkos teleport with Tacit? There's no real lore behind it. Alpha Sharkos are just able to use Tacit with no real reasoning behind it. And why is there just a Hive, rogue Hive construct in Minitirsa, Minitrizia, Minitirisa? I feel like, one, it just shouldn't be there. Minitrizia, Minit- the Ice Island. Okay, and also, 
if it was sent there, why wouldn't the Ministry go kill it or something and try to study it so that way they could understand life weave magic better? The players are able to kill it, so I feel like if you were to get like 9 or 10 profits, then you could probably have them kill the golem hive mech construct. Now back to the real lore stuff, in one of the lore books known as the Gods of the Machine, it explains that in order to learn shadow cast, you need to put a person in a machine and extract the energy from their body to make the attunement potion. But then, instead of the devs making a cool PvP-based quest that would unlock Shadowcast, you bring five Umbral Obsidian to a shady, weird woman hiding in the depths. Which is kinda dumb, because you're gonna have all this lore explanation and hype around how Shadowcast exists, but then you're just going to make it a fetch quest for five items that aren't even rare? I mean, unless, you know, that got retconned, like everything else that didn't make it into the game, but who even knows at this point? Also, why isn't Railblade enchantable? In lore, weapons imbued with an attunement aren't enchantable, because they're already technically enchanted with the attunement that they use and hand their power through. However, Railblade's flame isn't done through an enchant and is instead harnessed through an application of the user's magical ability. It's all artificial flame, it's not enchanted with the flame attunement. So what is the purpose behind us not being able to enchant the Railblades? I know it's balancing because they don't want to put enchants on a legendary weapon, but you guys can't just make the lore inconsistent consistent for the sake of balancing. Maybe say that it's made out of a weird metal that harnesses the flame charm better, and that metal is immune to any sort of modifiers or enchants. But don't just do it without explanation, because legendaries can't be enchanted. Along with this, it's the exact same for Light's Final Toll. It literally just isn't enchantable for balancing, but there's no real application or reasoning for it. Anyway, up to Tacit. Tacit is meant to let you turn invisible, but with Tacit Dropkick and also the Alpha Sharka, which I talked about earlier, it just gives you the capabilities of short range teleportation. Why does it do this? Why is it possible? And let's say it's not teleportation, you're just going invisible and running really fast. Why can't I move at that speed regularly? Also, I know I talked about this earlier, but I forgot to mention, shadow cast magic is illegal. All shopkeepers sell the item that is used to train shadow cast, and they just have it sitting out in the open with all the other attunement items. If shadow cast is supposed to be illegal, then why are they just casually selling the items meant to train the illegal magic? Even with lore speculation, Silent Heart still doesn't make sense. First of all, a being can't live without the song being imbued into them. Without the song, there is no life. So you should hypothetically die if your body doesn't have any song within it. Yet Silent Heart exists, which makes your heart outright deny the song. Unless, of course, Lore Garbage says that you don't deny the song entirely, which doesn't really make sense because you would think the song is more of an all-or-nothing thing, especially since Silent Heart should be more like a heavenly restriction than a you're stronger cancel out mantras, and you can't use the song except for bells for some reason, even though they're an application of the song. You can't use mantras, but you can use a stronger application of the song, such as a bell. Doesn't make sense, because you would think bells would be a harder application of the song than mantras, because everyone has mantras, right? But bells are a pretty rare thing in the Deep Woken world, but for some reason Silent Heart users can still use bells but not mantras? That's stupid. And if you're saying, oh, it's like denying a completely different note of the song, like let's say the bells are note A of a song, while a mantra would be like a B note, so you cannot use those B notes, but you can use the A notes. That still doesn't make sense, because it's supposed to just deny the use of the song in your body. Whatever. Anyway, also in lore, the stronger your soul is, the deeper you sink into the depths, as it's meant to be a trial to challenge you and your resolve. However, even the Duke doesn't really go past layer 2 when he dies, which in lore, every time the Duke dies, he comes back from the depths. So bro has like thousands of drowns by now, and his weak ass soul is still only dropping him down to layer 2 at worst, which we know because he says, that wretched city will never hold me, as in either Selter or Floor 2 of Layer 2, which are the only two cities in the depths that we know about, at least. So, your soul is weak, buddy. That's gotta be embarrassing. I just exposed the Duke like that. There's almost zero explanation to Songseekers changing from verse 2. Sunseeker had an entire biome change with the addition of the Rotlands, and a meteor fell from the sky, but there is no acknowledgement of any of this within the game at all, unless it's supposed to be the Celestial Death that caused it, which is again, super out of the way and hard to figure out, and you would literally never know that that happened without purposely trying to figure out what happened and searching through their Discord. Anyway, Kenneth is in Layer 2. This means Kenneth's soul is either equal or to or stronger than the Duke's soul, first of all. Second of all, interestingly enough, this could have been a huge chance to add a really cool quest to save Kenneth from the depths, and Archmage and Raguzer sadly didn't do it. And also, why did Kenneth get folded by the Etrus guards if he's strong enough to live in Layer 2, meaning he's stronger than the Kyr's guards? And the Kyr's guards are definitely stronger than any guards in Etrus, so I don't understand how Kenneth got folded 
by two black wearing guards in Etrus, but then he's happily living down in the Kyrs city. Anyway, the Ministry's first prophet is down in like layer 9 or something losing his mind, but we have no knowledge on any of that for some reason. Like, why can't we go down to layer 9? Why did you guys release a game without all the content that's in the lore? I really don't appreciate that, because now I want to go down the layer 9. What's, what's that going to be like? Is layer 9 just going to be the Aldark from Rogue Lineage, and he's just chilling down there with the uh, Abyss Walker trainer whose name I forgot? Someone leave it down in the comments below. And also, can we just talk about how evil Claris is? I know a lot of you call her Mommy Claris and stuff like that, but she's a bitch, bro. Captain Orlando is a chill dude. He helps you out in the tutorial and everything, but a small disagreement happened between him and Claris. So as retribution, she sent him down to Layer 2 and banished him there, exiling him from the depths, which is already hell. She exiled him from basically hell, sent him to worse hell, and said, hey, come back to hell and we're gonna kill you. Bro is way too chill for that. There's no way in hell he deserved that. Claris is a mean bitch for that, and I will never forgive her. Hashtag boycott Claris. Hashtag fuck Claris, but not in the good way. And also, Captain Orlando ate a piece of a drowned god, and he's a beast. Captain Orlando is badass. He probably beat Chaser. He can easily survive in Layer 2 Floor 2 against the Kyrs Guards, which we know because he's been down there for a long time. And he even survived the bombings unscathed. Captain Orlando is the GOAT of Deepwoken. He is the true main character, okay? He is absolutely the goat of Deepwoken, and I hope we see a Captain Orlando revenge sequence where he like, boom, he reaches through Clarice's chest and rips her heart out of her chest, and then he holds it in the air and he kills her, and then he takes over the, the divers, and then he becomes a pirate like that because he's already banished from like Etrus because he's a famed pirate. So then he just ends up becoming like another superpower down in the depths. That would be cool. And he's also a better character than Claris, so why not replace her, you know? Anyway, the Legion is stated to be a world superpower that can rival the Authority. However, unlike the Authority, we barely know anything about them. The reasoning for this is actually because the devs don't like the Legion as much as they like the Authority and therefore didn't write as much lore for them. The Lord Regent hasn't moved an inch off of his chair in the last 400 years. Could you imagine the Prophet's ass print? Oh my god, that legendary artifact is worth giving a sniff. Vision Shapers are still attacked by owls despite making a pact with their entire hive mind for illusory powers. Make it make sense. Claris basically created an entire tombman in the form of Dawn Walker. Yet Dawn Walker is only an oath with a few moves. Still though, fuck Claris, and not in the good way. And also, how does the deep drill not break as soon as most people step onto it? Knowing deep woken players, half the people in the deep drill probably weigh 600 pounds. <laughs> No, but actually, why don't the Bounders immediately attack it? Like, it's loud, it's moving, they just don't care about it. And the existence of the Deep Drill implies a lot of things. Like that all of Deepwoken is physically accessible at all times. Meaning the gods are literally just above you by maybe a few thousand feet. Meaning visiting heaven in the Deepwoken world is theoretically possible. And you can literally just dig down deep enough to reach anywhere. Like, look at this map. This is Deepwoken's universal map. And Deep Wind's universe, first of all, is semi-mirrored for some reason. So flying up will take you to heaven, but also if you go past heaven too high, you'll end up in the depths again. I don't know why. There's got to be some, like, Icarus sort of thing going on there. Like, oh, you try to go past heaven? You wanted more than what was in heaven? Fuck you. Go to hell, loser. Going down will also send you to the depths, but not get you into heaven. And along with that, the deep drill, super advanced, world-altering technology, and the ignition union, which drilled through all of that just for them to die to some weak-ass lizard things. Like, come on, bro, at least make it realistic. You guys have the technology to basically go through different borders of dimensions, but you're going to die to some weak lizard-looking things? Yeah, okay. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If I missed any bad lore stuff, leave a comment on what I missed. If you want to disagree with me, you can also leave a comment. I hope you all enjoyed. Check me out on Twitch. I stream every other day minimum and sometimes every day. I love you all. Have a great day and goodbye.